friends welcome to our things experiment today's video we are going to see about processors and many information about processor and how to choose a perfect processor for your perfect pc build so before starting the video let's see what are the contents we are going to see in the video so types of processors what processors do, do you need for your requirement what are the specification need to see while buying a processor what is overclocking and processor cooling system for your processor and what happens when you heat up your heat up your processor and let's see more and some more informations about processors so let's get started HDMI and the VGA port. Actually, this if you use this processor in this motherboard, you first you need to buy a update because this is a nine generation processor and this supports eight generation one. So this is a graphics card slot. So then, how can we connect and display to it if we can't use this HDMI or VGA? Actually, you need to use the HDMI and VGA in the gra graphics card. So here I have Zotac Zfox GT710 graphics card. So, so let me show you the picture of it. So this graphics card supports an HDMI and VGA port. It will be on the side of the graphics card. As an IO shield in it. Which has an HDMI port, VGA port, and another port. So you need to connect your monitor or an LED TV through HDMI or VGA from the graphics card. You note that you cannot use the HDMI or VGA in the motherboard. So now let's come to overclocking and graphics card. Sorry, processor. Overclocking a processor means clocking. Increasing the clock speed of the processor than the specification given by the manufacturer. So here you we can see the specifications of it. It is actually not given. So th this is a 2.9 GHz and ma max boost up to 4.1 GHz. So if you overclock this, max boot can be up to 4.7 GHz. So let's see what is a GHz. GHz means the clock speed of a processor or a graphics card or RAM. So this is actually 2.9 GHz. 
which means that 2.9 times uh, it, it moves it transfers data through through the processor in and out next let's see the cooling of an processor do we need an external cooler like this or like this then the cooler which is given in the box let's see so actually in my and processor has an pre applied cooler let me open it and this is the stock cooler which we get in the box of a processor so you can see intel it comes with pre applied thermal case and this is a basic cooler for your processor and wh why do we need this cooler let me show you this cooler also so if some of the cheap processor does not support cooling cooling fan which comes in the box you must buy a fan like this it does not come with pre applied thermal paste like this one the stock cooler has you must buy a thermal paste separately and apply it next we can see and see this cooler this is a super cooler from cooler master it comes with four copper pipes and an heat shrink with a fan with rgb light so why do we need this cooler this cooler actually costs about, about 2500 rupees so what's the difference between this cooler is it the speed no it is not the speed as you can see this cooler has an heat shrink over here there will there will be a speed difference between the both coolers but the main difference is this copper heat shrink which goes on to the processor actually the cooler fan will be on the side of the of the heat shrink like this big heat shrink and it transfers the cool coolness to this heat shrink so i have fixed it on my computer now let's see in my computer how does it looks so this is that cooler i recommend this cooler for people who are on their computer for more than 24 hours and who and regular user can consider this or this cooler so now let's see what is what does the thermal paste do thermal paste absorbs more, more heat as its name says thermal paste so this cooler does not comes with thermal paste how to apply a thermal paste let's see it now so here i have a thermal paste with me to apply on this pan this cost around 100 rupees this is an thermal paste to just apply on it take a brush and apply on it i will wait after i am applying the thermal paste i have applied the thermal paste so thermal paste is an important for cooling so this processor this fan does not uh, has pre applied thermal paste instead cooler master gives us an external paste in the box we must apply it before use so after using for more than 2 to 3 years this thermal paste becomes as a solid thing so after that you must change your thermal paste so how to remove the external thermal paste in this let's see that so for that you need an alcohol so i am using propyl alcohol which is specifically designed for cleaning thermal paste so just 
takes some amount of alcohol. So I have an alcohol. Use a brush or thin piece of foam or cardboard. Just wipe it on it using alcohol. So now you can see it is clean. So now we have seen the cooling system and how to apply a thermal pacing processor. So you may have a question what if I didn't use any of the cooling system so the answer is the processor starts so you might notice that you, your computer gets slower in many times and it gets hang so this is because that your cooling system might be uh, like this or the stock cooler so you may notice this if you use for a long time but if you use the coolers like this, and I forgot to say that there is an advanced type of cooling known as liquid cooling, which uh, attach the uh, which attach the pipe pump in the processor and three fan at the side of the CPU case. So that actually uses some liquid to cool it, and there is an advanced method of it too, which actually pumps in water like gel. So into the processor for cooling it is it is used for many gamers so we have seen many things until now so i recommend cooling system like this if you are using for more time and this for regular user so the next thing that you want to see while buying a processor is its generation. You might think Intel i3 5 is better than i3, but Intel i5 the second generation is not better than Intel i3 9th generation. And you may buy an Intel i7 because it is a latest chip, not the latest. Intel i9 is, has just released, and Intel i9 is the most common chip used in the computer. You might see many chips in online for 4,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees, which is around 100 to 200 dollars. So, what if you, you use that thing? Actually, you might, you must, you should not see the i5 or i3 alone. You must also see the, its generation. If the specification does not give generation, let me teach you how to say, see the generation. You might see 9400. This will be confirmedly given in your specification. i5 3200, 9500, 600, 9400. The first number is the generation of your processor. So, even while I am saying I saw many i7 processors for the below, just below this ring. This actually cost around 14,000, this processor. But i7 all cost at 3. 3000 rupees itself so the thing is the thing here is the generation differs this is the ninth generation and that is actually second or third, third generation so third generation pro i7 processor released 10 years before for those ty types of processors you you no need to use the, the this kind of fans for cooling. Now let's come to an important thing. If you are choosing an Intel i7 processor, which is third generation, and you are comparing with it with a latest processor on that budget, and the latest processor on that budget means because the thread and core are different. What does a thread and core means? Thread me thread. You must buy a processor with a good thread. Let's see about the processor core, which is an important thing while you are buying a processor. This is actually a 6-core processor. Now, 
the 2.3 GHz each max boost up to 4.1 GHz. So cores, cores. There are single core processor and multi core processor. In multi core processor, there are many cores. In uh, in Ryzen uh, one higher higher end CPUs and in Intel uh, Intel i9 uh, ninth generation CPUs, the core rate goes up to 32 cores. Cores. So you must see the compatible now let's see the compatibility of motherboard in the end processor don't just see that you uh, you it is an the eighth generation supported motherboard you can actually update bios to support ninth generation i have done it in that way so the first thing when to, uh, to see that your processor supports the motherboard it's there it's here you must see that it supports intel processors if if it is support the next thing you want to see is the socket socket numbers are l uh, l1151 and it differs and the intel i5 socket is actually lga1151 And you must see the so which what socket is in this motherboard. It will be given in the specifications. So as I can see that it uh, the, this motherboard has an L one one five one socket. So actually, and this motherboard does not support AMD processors. You must use an an another series of passes to support AMD Ryzen series. So. There are many types of processor. Let's see one by one. So the first uh, type is computer processor and mobile processor. This is not a type. This is actually an processor type. So the mobile processor is very small and. While, while buying a mobile, you must see that uh, the process number. Mostly, it will be a Helio Me MediaTek Helio processor or Snapdragon processor or Kirin processor. Kirin processors are mostly used in Huawei mobile and Honor mobiles. And MediaTek processors are used in many mobiles. And the Snapdragon latest 855 flagship, 855 plus, are the best processors right now in the market. So, while buying a computer processor, as I told before, you must see many things. And the next thing is the clock rate. You must see the clock rate of the motherboard, of the processor. Buy the best clock rate, higher clock rate processor at this price point. So, we have came to an end of the video. And then special thing, I'm going to show you how to test the processor. So let's move on to the computer. So there are two ways to check the processor specifications in a computer. The first way is, way is to see in BIOS. So turn on your computer. I'm using an access motherboard. So I'm going to access BIOS by clicking F2. So here we have came to and BIOS. Here you can see the processor specification. Core i5 9400F, CPU at 2.90 GHz. And the speed is 2900 MHz. And an additional information in Asus BIOS, you can actually check everything CPU fan speed in RPM. And the starter information, boot priority, and this has an easy UI. So now let's see how to check it via software in Windows. Exit the BIOS. So let's wait until it's booting.
so just log in so on clicking the, this pc right clicking this pc and opening prop, pro, proper pc you can actually see the, the, what we saw in bios intel core i5 9400f cpu 2.90 GHz. so let's see and benchmark cpu benchmark for that you need a software called cpu z open cpu download cpu z from their website choose for windows So after downloading, install the setup. Choose the location to install your thing, software. Click next, 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 install. After installing, click finish. So here you have the readme file open. So open the CPU Z software. Click yes. So it is actually loading. So here we have the full information on processor. Let me explain you one by one. So the first thing, Intel Core i5 9400F, which is the name of the processor, code name, Coffee Lake. It is a code name of the processor and max TDP power 65.01 package socket 1151LGA and what type of processor technology is this? It is actually a 14 nanometer processor. And a core voltage is actually 1.136 voltage specification and this is just what we saw in the this PC or in BIOS Intel Core i5-9400F CPU at 2.90 GHz and a family is 6 which is in core model E stepping A EXT family 6 EXT model 9E revision U O U0 and here we get some instructions and here we get the thing which is clock core so core speed is actually goes up to 3000 4000 thing and multiplayer bus speed so here we have the catch which is most important for the processor so this is a catch l1 data 16 to 32 kilobytes 8 way and 31 uh, inst 16 to 32 kilobytes and level 2 16 to 256 kilobytes 4 way and level 3 9 mb by 9 megabytes 12 way and the course is 6 also the threat is 6 and you can select the socket mostly it will be always socket 1 and you can click validate so validate to submit your processor information and here we can also see the benchmarks and other things and you can also see the graphics card specifications over here ram mainboard catch and here we get the detailed information about the catch in C cpu so thank you for watching my video about the processors so let me know the uh, how this video was in the comment and in my next video i will show you how to build a pc what are the things required for the pc what you need to see for building a pc so thank you for watching Bye, let's meet our next video. Like, please like, share and subscribe.